this is Colby playing League of Legend Open Beta. Pretty cool game here. We gotta introduce you guys to Faker if you haven't seen him already. He might be just the best mid laner in the world. I've just been building up and working on my skill set. Now we're playing TFT today. This is my very first round. I am nervous as heck. Yes, assassin! <laughs> Let's do it, baby. It's time to game on. Yeah, it's amazing because this world has been historic. I'm French. Look at the get teleport! Eos got the top two! I love it! This series! A lot of people feel like Dynamic Cube kills the competitiveness of League. I made some really bad mistakes, and I died a lot for no reason. There's been times where even I don't believe in myself, and everyone's telling me I'm washed up. I'm really sorry to all my fans. <sighs> I'd let you guys down. All we'll have to do is get better, you know? I got beat so bad the last game. Hopefully it goes a little bit better than before. It was these guys who made me keep going and believed in me. Oh, yeah! Man. Boom! Oh, no. May your mana points overflow and your AOE stick. May supports cover your flanks. May your marksmen aim true. Yes. Yo no he pensado estar aquí, ¿no? Entonces, es uno de los claros ejemplos que se haga a todas las personas. Hey everyone, Joe here again on behalf of the League Dev Team. 
Today, we have a very special Riot Please for you. Of course, we're going to tell you all about our plans for the upcoming preseason. We'll also give you an update on TFT and much more. In fact, we've got a lot of great updates to share today, so be sure to stay tuned through the end of the show. But before we cover any of that, I want to talk about something important. This month marks a very special occasion. In just over a week, it'll have been 10 years to the day since League's official release date. For us, League has always been a game that we build together with all of you. Truth is, you've always been the ones who've made League more than just a game. You've made incredible art. You've created memes. You've showed us in a million different ways that you care about League, that games matter enough to become a meaningful part of your lives. You've helped us make League more than a game. For us, celebrating League's 10-year anniversary is a chance to say thank you to all of you who've helped us build League, brick by brick. And to show our appreciation, here's what we've got planned. First up, 10 days of gifting. For 10 days, starting October 17th, we'll be celebrating you, the League community, with a small gift every day you log in. And no, it's not just summoner icons, although of course we gotta give you one of those. All you'll need to qualify is a League account that was created before this broadcast began. We want the rest of this month to feel like a real celebration so expect to see SR looking a little brighter than normal. Your shop is coming back. And because it's a special occasion, for the first time ever, there will be a chance that your shop contains legendary tier skins. In the past, we've spoken about our reasons for moving away from classic Earth to the all random Earth mode. But this is a time to celebrate and pull out all the stops. So for the first time in over four years, we're bringing back Earth with full champion select. It'll be available from October 28th through November 8th, so you can keep the celebration going. Over the last decade, you haven't just helped make League a great game, you've helped make the world a better place. All the way back in 2010, you bought the Earth Warwick skin, and together we raised money to save actual manatees. In 2011, after a devastating earthquake in Japan, you and Nurse Sakali raised more than $160,000 for the Red Cross and provided relief to hundreds of thousands of people in need. The following year, you banded together and through the Jaxima skin contributed to the Make-A-Wish Foundation in honor of a league player named Joe. In 2017, we committed over $2 million from the proceeds from Championship Ash to three great charities that you voted for. And last year, with the help of Brian, a cancer survivor who helped us design the Dark Star Cho'Gath skin, you all raised over $6 million for 20 charities around the world. That's the power of the League community. When we come together, we can accomplish truly remarkable things all over the world, in all of the communities we're a part of. And we know there's a huge appetite out there to do even more. So today, we're announcing a new initiative called the Riot Games Social Impact Fund. This unique nonprofit will be the engine for our collective efforts around global social impact. Since establishing the fund earlier this year, we've already donated over $4 million to charities around the world. As a global game, we know it's important for you to choose which charities the money raised in your region goes to. And that's what this fund will make possible. Later this year, we'll be releasing Dawnbringer Karma the first skin where all proceeds will go to the Social Impact Fund. On behalf of everyone at Riot, thank you for everything you've done. The good we can do together is just getting started. Okay, let's hear about what we've got planned for preseason. Hey everyone, Jess here. 
Before we get into preseason, I want to share a small announcement that'll make players in one particular part of the world happy. We know that there are many league players in the Middle East and North Africa who love League and have been playing on European and North American servers, and that we can do a better job of supporting them. We are proud to announce that we will be supporting these players by gradually offering all Riot Games products and services in Arabic. Okay, on to preseason changes. Over the years, Sumner's Rift has changed a lot. Sometimes in small adjustments to things you're already familiar with, and sometimes in complete overhauls or totally new additions. We've always thought of Summer's Rift as a living, breathing place with enough depth to be fun and interesting, whether it's your first time playing or if you're a seasoned veteran. And to that end, preseason 2020, Rise of the Elements, will introduce new emergent gameplay opportunities on the map, meant to open fresh strategies to master, outplay, and win. The biggest change here is the new elemental rift system. As teams take down elemental drakes, one element will eventually dominate the rift, permanently altering the map. Each elemental rift impacts team fights, rotations, vision, and objective control in a unique way, meaning no one game will play out the same as the last, even if everyone's on the same champ. Infernal knocks down walls and burns down brush. Mountain adds new terrain to play around. Ocean makes brush grow larger and spawn extra honey fruit, and cloud turns pathways into wind tunnels that increase movement speed. Elemental buffs are also getting an overhaul, with the final stack of each element offering powerful effects that aren't just stats. Plus, Cloud Drake should be more satisfying now that we've switched it to Grant CDR on your ult. And don't worry, we're not letting Elder Dragon be one-upped by its younger siblings. When the game gets to Elder, we know the game's progressed pretty far. And to that end, we want to change the invisible parts of Elder buff into power that more clearly tells you to fight and push through to the end. Elder buffs keeping its burn effect, but instead of the large passive stat stick Elder currently gives, it'll now ground and execute against enemies below a certain health threshold. Dragons aside, we're also making a few map changes to add more outplay opportunities. Top and bot are getting new alcoves to shake up vision control and ganks, and we're adding some new brush by the blue buff river entrances. That's just the start of what preseason has to offer. We'll be publishing a dev blog shortly after the stream with more info on these changes, plus a ton of others we didn't have the time to get to here. Next up, we've got a piece to show you. Following his relentless pursuit of his nemesis, Lucian finally comes face to face with his past, kicking off a new chapter of one of League's oldest rivalries. Check it out.
That's right, Sunna is coming to League of Legends as our first ever support marksman. She'll be available on PBE October 29th. Summoner's Rift isn't the only mode that's evolving this year. Let's talk a little bit about League's newest permanent game mode, Teamfight Tactics. When we launched Teamfight Tactics earlier this year, we hoped you'd love it, and the response has blown us away. TFT has brought millions of players to League. It's one of the biggest modes we've ever added to League, and it has us feeling incredibly inspired about ways we can keep investing into TFT for years to come. One of the biggest ways we're going to be changing the game in the near future is with seasonal sets. A couple of times per year, we'll rotate in a whole new host of champions, origins, classes, and items. TFT will always be about strategic depth and exploration. In the new sets, we'll keep some of the mechanics familiar, but we'll also reimagine a few favorites, and we'll introduce others that are totally new. Thematically, we can explore the entire League universe and the alternate universes by drawing deep from the whole spectrum of champions and skins that we've created in the past 10 years. The first seasonal set is coming to live servers in just three weeks. It's called Rise of the Elements, just like preseason. It will feature totally new origins like Desert, Inferno, Poison, and new classes including the Summoners and Mystics. New champions like Lux, Annie, Olaf, and even some old favorites bringing new twists. Those that played in the beta season will get rewarded for their climb, and we'll reset the ladder as we bring improvements to the system. And of course, set two wouldn't be complete without a whole new host of Little Legends, Arena skins, and some brand new things to make you and your team look good. It'll hit PBE October 22nd, and we've just published a dev blog on LeagueOfLegends.com with more details. Check it out and let us know what you think. One more thing. From the moment we launched TFT, players have been asking for a mobile version of the game. It turns out, you guys actually do have phones. So by popular demand, we're announcing Teamfight Tactics as its own separate app for iOS and Android devices. It's coming in early 2020, and we'll have a few betas coming in December of this year. It'll feature full cross-platform play with the PC version of TFT. Hope you enjoy it. We hope you're as excited as we are for what's coming for SR and TFT. There's something else we'd like to share. It's something we've been working on for a while, and some of you might even be expecting it. TFT isn't the only thing going multi-platform. Coming soon, we'll be bringing the League experience to both mobile and consoles. So let's take a first look at League of Legends Wild Rift. Hey there, it's Michael Chow. I've been dying to talk to you about the Wild Rift, which is coming soon to console and mobile. It's taken us years, way, way too long to do this, but we had to get it right. We needed to figure out how to bring a true League experience to other platforms in a way that's worthy of your love, your time, your investment. And we think we've finally gotten there with the Wild Rift and we're thrilled to be able to share it with you. Now, why bring League to other platforms in the first place? Well, for years, many of you have been telling us that the marquee League PC experience is sometimes tough to fit into your lifestyle, which can change from one week to the next, one month to the next, one year to the next. You've also been telling us that you simply can't play League with a lot of the friends you love to game with. Yes, because of their lifestyles as well, but also because League takes a long time to learn. The matches are really long and so on. So we built a new Rift that you can play on console and mobile with 15 to 20 minute matches and a dual stick control scheme that's intuitive and satisfying and still super deep. We've also added some new systems that preserve the core 5v5 gameplay you know, while adding a few twists that we think really shine on mobile and console. Now, Wild Rift is not a port of the PC game. Taking SR and just shoving it onto new platforms wasn't going to work. To get the gameplay just right, we needed to rebuild from scratch. We spent a long time making sure this will be a true League of Legends experience that's worthy of devoting your precious game time. Wild Rift has incredible depth, and you can make those same badass 200 IQ outplays and team plays you know and love from League PC.
And we'll be straight with you. There are some downsides to the from scratch approach we've taken. We're not going to have every single champ and skin available on all platforms. And although you won't get the same unlocks between League on PC and this version, you will get great rewards for the time you've spent with League over the last 10 years. But like I said, we think these trade-offs are worth it. Starting from scratch has given us the opportunity to do a full visual remaster on a ton of the game. We've also taken the time to build an all new collection system that lets you show off all your champs and skins in an incredibly immersive way. We think this is so dope. We're just going to play this for a bit so you can enjoy it. We've got so much more to show you, but that's everything from me for now. As you saw earlier, League on PC has some huge plans ahead, but we'd love for you to join us on the Wild Rift when the game releases in your region. We're rolling out limited alphas and betas in select regions later this year, with plans to roll out on most platforms and most regions globally by the end of 2020. So whether you're grinding ranked on Summoner's Rift, popping Poros in ARAM, going full glacial on TFT, or squeezing in a game on the Wild Rift. We hope that there's a place for you and your friends to dive into the world of League together. Ten years ago, being an esports fan was hard. Tournaments were few and far between. Streaming was still in its infancy. When we held our season one tournament at DreamHack, we had like a hundred folding chairs, half of them were empty, but you tuned in en masse, a million on the stream, and that show of force gave us the permission to go big, to lay the groundwork for a sport that would be worthy of the passion from the players and the teams and the fans. We saw the potential, but our journey was not without setbacks and failures. Along the way, we faced our fair share of detractors. We often struggle to deliver an experience worthy of your expectations. But you, you continue to show up. A record-shattering 99.6 million viewers tuned in to watch Invictus Gaming face off against Fnatic at last year's World Championship. Now, 100개가 넘는 전문 e스포츠 팀의 1,000명 이상의 프로 선수들이 전 세계 13개의 프로 리그에서 경쟁합니다. These organizations now mirror more traditional sports orgs. It's coaches, analysts, personal trainers and sponsors. There are thousands of professionals around the world whose full-time careers are in the sport of League of Legends. In the years ahead, you'll see more features like ProView and more blending of sports and entertainment with experiences like the Elder Dragon and KDA. Even if you're silver in league, you can prove you're a challenger to your coach in the new League of Legends Esports Manager coming out next year. We will start from the next season from LPL to start to do this and finally try to expand it to the world of the world. You'll see more investment into studios like the one we're in right now, which was developed to power not only our LPL league, but also our 10th World Championship, a multi-city spectacle taking place in China next year. Now the next few years of esports will no doubt be epic, but more immediately, we're just as excited about what's right in front of us, the 2019 World Championship. 16 teams from around the world are competing in Berlin for the chance to raise the Summoner's Cup. Top teams who survive the group stage will travel to Madrid before completing their journey on November 10th at the 2019 World Finals in Paris. We are so grateful to all of you for watching, for supporting, and for believing in the potential of League. We could not have done this without you. Thank you. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you to all of you for helping make League of Legends a global sport. For all of you and all the support you've put into League of Legends, thank you so much. early days, we knew we wanted League to be about characters with rich personalities, clearly defined themes, and deep gameplay. But we were all passionate at heart with very little practical expertise. Some of our early efforts managed to capture something magical, but we knew a lot of them had room to improve. We've always believed that we've made something great when it resonates deeply with you all. All that love that you put into our world and the appreciation you show when we get something right inspires us to keep trying. At first, the League universe existed only within the game. Then, we realized players wanted to know more about the world, but we were a little scared that we were going to screw it up. So, we invested in small experiments to try to get better. But, now we're entering a new era. You're going to see us try a lot of different ways for you to engage with the world of League of Legends. From comics, to novels, board games, music videos, TV. I know this all sounds a little crazy, but like with everything we do, we're going to look to you to let us know what's working, and we'll double down on those areas. How's the latest sound? Oh, it's pretty good, thank you. Hold up for you. Yeah, man, that sounded great. Thanks. Hey guys, how's the world going? Yeah, it's going really well. Good to go, dude. See you in Paris.
So for the last 10 years, we haven't just been making League of Legends. We always knew we wanted to make new games eventually, but not at the expense of you know, the growth and the needs of League of Legends. A lot of us spent our youth playing shooters, like really hard shooters. Strategy games. It had a Street Fighter 2 machine. I love games that bring me somewhere new. One of my all-time favorite games, for example, is Civilization. The single player side, not the multiplayer side. Magic the Gathering, by far. I've been a card game player my whole life. I grew up playing lots of classic adventure games. I play a lot of MMORPGs, which tend to last basically forever. I was going to the arcade every day after school. I've been a dungeon master for 30 years. I think Riot is a collection of people that started as players that wanted to make new experiences or better experiences so they became developers while remaining players. Whether you're a, a tactical shooter fan or a fighting game fan or a strategy card game fan, you can count on Riot to support that those needs with a really, really strong long-term mindset. Even though we all love League of Legends, I think we also all love to imagine the possibility of what would it be like to run around and explore the world of Runeterra? How could we enable experiences for, for players to go explore with their friends? I hope that in the same way when you see a Disney movie and then you go to Disneyland and getting to actually walk around and explore a space that you know really well feels so magical, I hope that's the kind of experience that we can give to players. That feeling of actually seeing something and then going there in person and wandering around as though it were real. We didn't build League of Legends, right? We started it, we seeded it, and then we built it with the community of players. Right? The players have showed us ways to play our game that we never imagined, right? And they're continuing to do that. You know, we just exposed a whole bunch of information about what we're making as we become, I think, more transparent, that they will know that we are always thinking about them first. As a developer, it's such an exciting time when you've been working on something sort of behind the scenes for such a long period of time and you start to show it to the rest of the world to, to get feedback. About a month ago at EVO, we were able to share news about Project L uh, with fighting game fans around the world, uh, live and in person. That was a crazy, surreal experience because we've been working on this for a little while and we've always had to be so secretive. What I think League of Legends players expect from this game is uh, different, but in some ways um, harmonious with what I think fighting game players expect from this game. Uh, everyone wants a great game, but what we've been seeing is that people are really excited to see Rune Terran champions like in a new light, even like from a new camera angle. Making fighting games is really, really tough. Uh, these are intricate games to make. And while we're uh, a good ways towards uh, making something that we think is really cool, we still have a long way to go. We're gonna go dark for a while after this. Um, so please don't expect anything soon, but know that we're here working hard for you. My hope is that Riot continues on for many, many years and decades to come as a company that players can count on to have their back. We're really excited to see how people react and, and you know, we believe that there's an incredible opportunity to sort of make some player dreams come true in a bunch of new ways and we hope we can do that. Hey everyone, I'm Anna and I'm the executive producer on one of those games you just saw, codenamed Project A. We've talked about our philosophy on developing new games here at Riot, but I figured we could also show you some. We're making new games, and this one's different, so here it is. Project A is our character-based tactical shooter. It's competitive, it has precise gunplay, it's set on a beautiful near-future Earth, and it has a lethal cast of characters, each with their own unique abilities. This is our take on a competitive shooter. We promise that just like League, we're in this for years and years to come. With Project A, we're staying true to the high consequence gameplay of tax shooters. But we want to evolve the space. We want a tax shooter with more creativity, more expression, and a lot more style. In Project A, your abilities create amazing tactical opportunities for your gunplay to shine. We started with a crew of veteran developers who have a deep passion and a wide range of experience in the FPS space. 
But it's not enough to have the right team. We also need to solve the right problems. But what does that really mean? Well, we're all tired of seeing our bullets not register because of low server tick rates. We keep hearing buzzwords like dedicated servers, but almost nothing about low ping or how a game plans to fight peekers advantage. But with Project A, we're going big on things like global infrastructure and netcode designed to go to war on peekers advantage. You'll hear more technical details as we get closer to launch, but just know, we know, these are critical things to get right. Now let's talk about the cheaters. We know you hate second guessing if you really lost, or if someone was running an aimbot or a wall hack. From day one, we have put anti-cheat at the forefront of our development, and we will do whatever it takes to preserve the integrity of your matches. We want to be firm in our commitment here, because this matters to us, and we know it really matters to you. And these are just some examples of what we mean when we say we want to do a character-based tactical shooter right. We're keeping the fundamentals that make this genre so, so competitive, but also bringing some new additions. We're going heads down for a while, but expect to hear more from us in 2020. In the meantime, keep an eye on our Riot Games Twitter feed for any updates and maybe a few cool teases. Thanks, everyone. Hi, I'm Jeff Ju. I'm Andrew Yip. And we have a confession. We're making a card game. What? OK, OK. We know what some of you might be thinking. Riot, there are plenty of card games. Why are you making another one? And we get it. We've been playing them since we were kids, so we're super familiar with the flaws of our favorite genre. Spending an entire paycheck just to try another deck, over the top RNG, deciding which player wins, metas that get solved way too fast, and cards that stay broke way too long. So we asked ourselves, what if we could change all that? We spent a lot of time thinking about what we would do differently. And now, we're aiming to shake up the card game formula by keeping what's great, improving what's not, and adding some new twists of our own. We've been hard at work making the best card game that we can imagine, one that we hope players everywhere will love. And we're super excited to show you what we've got so far. Today, we're going to share three things we hope will excite you too. How we're bringing the world of League of Legends to this game, what makes our gameplay unique, and finally, how you unlock cards. Let's do it. When we decided to make a card game in the League of Legends universe, we knew where we had to start, the champions. Ask any League player, and they'll tell you why their main is the most badass, exciting, and satisfying champ to play. Our goal is to make the champions in Legends of Runeterra live up to those expectations and then some. <laughs> in the first set, you can choose from 24 champion cards to include in your deck, each with a unique mechanic inspired by their original League abilities. Champions enter the battle as powerful cards, and if you play smart, they level up to become even more epic. These level ups are game-changing moments, both strategically and visually. Champions are key cards to build your deck around, but to take down the aiming nexus, you're going to need a team. Pick allies that support your champ's strategy to level up fast and take control of the board. And you have tons of supporting cards to choose from. You'll encounter some familiar faces and discover completely new ones. Every card and character in the game comes from a region of Runeterra. At launch, you have access to cards from six major regions, Demacia, Noxus, Freljord, Piltover and Zaun, Ionia, and the Shadow Isles. Each region has a distinct playstyle and strategic advantage. But things get even more interesting when you combine cards from two different regions. There's a deck for every personality and playstyle. But it's up to you to find the right cards for your winning strategy, or a different kind of strategy. We believe the best card games are the ones where you make meaningful choices and constantly interact with your opponent, while the worst ones feel like complicated solitaire. So, we're designing Legends of Runeterra to really focus on that back and forth between you and the player on the other side of the screen. Each of you trying to anticipate the other's move and then beat them to the punch. You'll probably start with a strategy in mind and a win condition on the horizon. But as you alternate actions with your opponent, you'll need to think quick and make on-the-fly decisions. It's all about finding opportunities to predict what your opponent will do next, adapt your strategy, and achieve that ultimate outplay the moment when you pull off your plan and make the move that wins you the game. In our experience, these moments are the best part of a good card game. 
So you wanna increase how often they happen and ensure that there are multiple paths to get there. Now we could spend hours talking about all the ways you can win, but they told us to keep this video short. So here's a few. In Legends of Runeterra, it's skill above all. No game is over until it's over, and there will always be new cards and strategies to discover. But there's probably still a big question on your mind. How do I actually get all these cards? We thought for a long time about what we, as players, would want the answer to be. With most card games, it takes a lot of time, money, or luck to get what you want. And if the only way you can get cards is at random, that sucks. We think one of the most fun aspects of a card game is experimenting with the different kinds of decks to find your style. And that's really hard to do when unlocking new stuff is too random or too expensive. So one of our top priorities is to give you more choice in how you get your cards. To start, Legends of Runeterra is free to play. As you play, you'll complete quests and earn experience to advance and automatically unlock new cards. But which region you unlock first is totally up to you. You decide where your cards come from and can switch regions whenever you want, which makes assembling your dream deck a whole lot easier. We get how fun Kraken Packs can be. It's paying for the card lottery that really sucks. So at the start of each week, you'll also unlock chests from the vault. These chests level up the more you play. They can also contain wild cards, which can be turned into any card you want, no guessing required. But we know sometimes you just want a guaranteed way to get specific cards too. So instead of waiting for the right drop, you can unlock cards for your collection using shards you've earned or coins you've bought. Bottom line, in Legends of Runeterra, you will never pay for randomized packs. And you have a bunch of different ways to get the cards you actually want. No matter what, you'll end up with multiple decks for both casual duels and the competitive meta. We're really excited to focus less on selling packs and more on the things that make a card game great. Deep, interactive strategy, frequent releases and balance updates, and endless experimentation. We hope that by focusing on these things above all else, Legends of Runeterra can grow to become more than just a game. Like League back in 2009, we believe the journey is just beginning, and with your help, we can create something incredible together. What you've seen today is a foundation which we intend to build on for years to come. The full PC beta is coming in early 2020, and you can pre-register for both PC and mobile right now at playrunterra.com. We bought that URL, right guys? .com? And I know we said we only have three things to share today, but we might actually have one more. Are we ready? Guess we'll find out. For the next five days, we're rolling out a special preview patch of Legends of Runeterra on PC. Head to playrunterra.com and pre-register for a chance to get access right now. You can also check out live streams on Twitch to see more gameplay and link your Riot account to increase your chance at getting access. A lot of things are work in progress and we're still developing the final features, but we're super excited for you all to get a first look. And if you don't get a chance to play this time around, don't worry. We'll be back with another preview patch before the end of the year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And until then, we hope you enjoy your first peek at Legends of Runeterra. We love it when we have the opportunity to connect with all of you directly. And so much has happened since we all started on this journey over 10 years ago that we really just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. We've always aspired to be worthy of the passion, the love, and the dedication that you all have for League, and we are committed to bringing that same level of care and attention to everything that we do in the future. And I really want to emphasize the thank you for sticking with us through the ups and downs of this journey, through painful server outages and game-breaking bugs, our failures to listen and get certain things right tons of misfires and missteps, not to mention about 72 different Rise reworks. Because through it all, we've built together over the last 10 years, this game, this community, this sport, and this world of Runeterra. And on that last note, we're committed to finding ways to bring the stories from Runeterra to life. And before we wrap, we'd like to share a glimpse into one last thing that we've been working on.
on a very important secret. Power comes to those who will do anything to achieve it. It's time to let the monster out. Thank <laughs> you.